All right, welcome back. My guest is joining me right now. I will start from my immediate right. Ogene Karo Ajaro is the national president, National Banana and Plantain Growers, Processors, Marketers Association of Nigeria. Welcome to you, sir, and thanks for joining me. Thank you, Dr. Austin Maduka is the national president, Community Allied Farmers Association of Nigeria. Welcome to the show, too. Thank you. Nice um, for being here. So I'm talking about commodities today. Uh, for those that watch my program, this program, every single, at least every single working day, Monday to Friday, uh, I know people work Saturday and Sunday too, mm. but from Monday to Friday, they will know, of course, we have a market analysis segment where I take a look at commodities, even agricultural commodities, apart from metal commodities. And I'm very high on exposing or enlightening Nigerians, especially even the government, that there's so much potential and so much good we can get from other commodities apart from crude oil, cocoa, cotton, even palm cassava. oil, cassava. And most of these commodities, we are the biggest producers in the world. But we are not, you know, harnessing, we are just producers for mount, you know, as it were. But let me start with you, uh, Dr. Maduka. Just give me a brief background because you are involved, this is your field actually. So just talk to me about what's been happening so far. Um, thank you, Nancy, for this opportunity. Uh, I want to thank Nigerians and I uh, want to also thank the president for appointing one of us to be the Minister of Agriculture. Having been the chairman of Afan in Kano, I know with uh, his experience and uh, also a farmer, I believe if uh, things are put right, Nigeria will begin to do the right thing as far as agricultural commodity is concerned. But to be frank, um, we have not really got it right in terms of agricultural activities in Nigeria. Um, if we must get it right, the government must uh, astronomically set aside a certain amount of fund, one, to look at the area of land Clearing is a major problem in the agricultural sector. The lands we have now is not, a, it's not enough for in industrial purposes. Two, the institutions, the agricultural institutions, clearly educations, have really gone bad. And then access to inputs, like seeds and what have you. We cannot say today we have quality seeds in Nigeria. And if you don't have seeds, what will you cultivate? And then markets. The market is not here, it's not really available here. Most of the gloves we have is because one, even when the farmers grow, there's nowhere to preserve some of these things. Go to Benue and see the wastage in Benue. Go to Niger State and see the wastage in, 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 in Niger. This is the period of fruits. If you pass through these areas, you know that we're not really there. No, no proper storage facilities as far as these commodities are concerned. Cassava alone in Nigeria can trigger over 10 trillion naira annually into Nigeria. 10 trillion? Yes, that's annually. That's a lot of yes, money. Yes, if well managed, yes. Cassava 10 alone. 10 trillion? Yes, cassava alone can do that for this country. Let's forget about oil and face agriculture if we really want to do it well. If the government will be calic enough, you know, to spell out activities, and then people are, are sure, or people are sure that in February, funds are available Inputs are av available, they can assess inputs. The donation centers are known to the farmers. For those who want to take fertilizer, it must not be a subsidized kind of agriculture. Agriculture is a business. Let there be an enabling environment created by the government. A lot of youths, we went around, you know, canvassing and advocating for youths to come into agriculture. So many youths came into agriculture. But at the end of the day, their hopes were dashed. Some applied for the NISAL and Cobras program. And the NISAL program, as far as I'm concerned, is selective. Mm. It's selective. Okay. The NISAL program is selective. We, we only hear about it on the television and pages of newspaper. But in the, in the real fact, it has not really, really gotten to the targeted farmers. I, for one, was is a victim because my association, Comafas, applied in al almost or the state of the federation. Our tickets were, were given approval, but this was not given to us. 
Why? What were the reasons? I don't given? know. NISA will, 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 will blame Central Bank. Central Bank will blame NISA. NISA will say it's the fault of BFO. BFO will say it's the fault of NISA. And let me also, you know, make it clear. NISA, I don't know if it is an organization set to the fault Nigerians. Because last year, some of our members got alerts that fund was disbursed to them by NISA for bene seed cultivation, sesame seed cultivation. For last year, November, as I speak with you now, none of them have accepted that money. That cultivation has not been done. But you said they received that. They lads, received that. Money's in their account. Money's in their account. But and the money's there. Nancy, nice, the money is not there. Okay. Because what happened was immediately we got the alert. People started calling me as their president. President, we got alert too. Uh, I said from which bank? They said it was Fidelity Bank. I quickly called one of our account officers in Fidelity Bank and said. Was this emanated from Fidelity Bank? He said, no. They are not aware of such disbursement. So how was that so a fake how alert? Come, I don't know how nice I got that, this thing. I still have evidences. It's on my phone. My wife I, 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 I would like to see that, you know, so that I would also investigate for that. Even with NISAL, I will have to speak with NISAL on this issue. The money came in mm. within, within, within two, three minutes. NISAL made withdrawals from this, this money ahead of disbursement. Money for these charges, money for this fee, about five thousand something was moved from that account. Okay, L l I've I've listened to you and I've heard you, and I'll see what I can do uh, concerning. Outside that, again, let's yeah. see. We were asked by the same Nisal to acquire land because, based on the templates they set for the farmers to assess their funds, they said it must be between it must be between fifty and above hectares of land clustered in one particular area for farmers to you know, be able to assess the fund. Farmers were made to go outside their farming areas to go and acquire lands. And these farmers were made to pay money. And at the end of the day, we lost over 12 million naira last year. The landowners were not allowed to farm there. The farmers did not farm because we were waiting for the disbursement. Mm -hmm. Until the end of the rainy season, nothing happened. Okay. Early this year again, they invited us again. Shipidly, we followed them did the same again. Towards the tail end of the rain season, when they know that maize will not be able to be cultivated again, they gave reasons why they cannot continue with the program. For okay. This season. Let me bring in Mr. Ajaro here and talk to me about, you know, your own background to in terms of growing uh, commodities because your association, which you are the president, you grow, you process, you also market. market yes. The three in one. So I think it's <laughs> the whole value chain you, uh, you, you are uh, involved in. Talk to me about your own experience, just as Dr. Modica has. Well, our association is a new association. We're just about four, four, five years old now. Okay. And uh, we are marketers, we are growers, and we are processors. We are not thinking on relying on government. We are thinking on working on our own through the anchor brass program because if you rely on government like he has said you will fail so what we do is we have the growers we have those who supply us our suckers we have those who grow we now have processors and then those who buy from us the channel is what we are working on now so we have an agreement with government with banks with uh, uh, processors, uh, manufacturers of processing machines, so that we don't rely, we don't think of government at all. Because if you rely on government, the disappointment uh, he's having now, you, that we have experienced it from before we joined this association. You rely on them, you fail. So does that mean you're not even engaging government at all? Yes, we want them to come in. We want them to come even at, at any point. Because without the government, we will not have the enabling environment. We, ha we need legislation mm -hmm. that will give us the strength. Yeah. Because right now in this country, we have people from India producing, making banana here in Abuja. We have Israelis here in Abuja. They will come walk into the country and do whatever they want to do. Growing banana? Yes. Yes. I've been to their farms. That is not supposed to, supposed to be with us. And we monitor what you, where is your product from. We have to have traceability from India. Why? What is it like? Who has experienced it? Who is eating it? 
are supposed to do such So things. the suckers themselves, are, uh, the suckers which they plant are not Nigerian suckers? No, except for the one from India that they are producing them here. Mm. They are producing their suckers here. But the one from uh, um, Russia, uh, Israel, that we visited, we told, the man told us that they brought their suckers from Israel. I don't know how quarantine approved them. We even asked them, give us your suckers so that we can see what it is with us here. They refused. But if there's a law in this country, which we are asking for, that is part of government we want. There's a law in this country that allows it. Before you come into the meet the association, join the association. We investigate the, the, value, the, the, the chain from the soccer to the concern because it is not processed. So dri taxi drivers, lorry drivers, that's national uniform, you know, are members of our association because they are in the value mm. chain. Even you today, publicity, you are a member of the value chain. I'm also a consumer. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm an end user. Yes. Because so I eat plantain and banana. Yes. And so if we do not monitor things, monitor things like this in this country, we will fail. No. If, if, if we monitor it, it can go to any other country mm. and pass our test. Because right now, whatever you are consuming, you don't know whether it's organic, whether it's inorganic. You don't know the process. You just buy, process, and go. We are even working with a, a standard organization, and uh, nine, nine, nine NAVDAC right now on how we can see that this process is followed. Now, I'm really interested in why perhaps suckers from other countries will come. Is it that our own suckers are not good or they are disease infested? Okay. Or they are not, they are, yes, they are not good breeds that will make the business profitable? Okay. Yes, that is one. Our, our um, um, banana here in Nigeria are uh, dwarf. They are dwarf. Are they yeah. those, are those, those short green ones? Yeah, no, they're not short. When I mean dwarf, the fingers are not many. Okay. But the ones, this hybrid that they bring, which you can get about three feet long, with a more than 200 or 100 and something fingers. So you make more money. But then we can develop them here. There are facilities. There's nine hot that can turn one soccer into about one million soccer's within a few days yes nine hot so it's bringing the soccer in let us look at what what it is tear it into pieces and then the we will begin to have because we will collaborate with nine hot who will give us suckers who will pay for it who will pay because that place is supposed to make money okay now as, as you are the president of the banana and plantain uh, growers processors and marketers uh, what is the potential for us as we grow banana and plantain? Uh, just like cassava, we are the largest producer of okay. cassava in the world. Yes. I think we're also the largest, no, we are the fifth largest of producer of palm oil, I oh think, in the yes. world, after Malaysia and uh, who came India. To, to, who came here to, to, to take our seats? Yeah. The seat, that's that's that, the seat. Yes, that, yeah. that's, what they say. that's what they say. It's not what they say, that is, mm -hmm. that is the facts. It was taken yeah, away from here. you know, uh, okay, that's uh, another issue for another day. Yes. But <laughs> the thing is, uh, even if they took our seats from here, they did what we were not doing, doing here. Better. So we shouldn't even be blaming, be, be blaming them at all, you know. Uh -huh. But anyway, it's still part of what we're talking about. Uh, so Potentials. what is the, yes, potential. Uh, are we number one, number two, number three, number four or five in the world? I would like to know. No, no. On the list, we are not. In, in Nigeria, in Africa, we are not in the list. Really? So yes. most of the banana plantain we eat here... We produce a lot, but it's not enough for our consumption. So does that mean we have a lot of imported... Yes, yeah, Cameroon was bringing, but we have been able to stop that now. Okay. They were bringing some from Cameroon because of the Nigerian... Uh, 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 yes, we can come in any tiny time, bring in anything and taking anything away from this country. But we've been able to monitor. So now you don't even see them on the street of... Uh, Abuja, yeah, guess. because there was a time I wanted to buy banana, mm. really, and... With, with stickers yeah, on yeah, them. Yes, yes, you know, and the man was like, ah, madam, buy this banana, and I imported banana. Uh -huh. uh, this one are the good one. I was like, where did you bring it from? He said, ah, I imported. Oh, I said, it's not Nigerian no, banana. No, 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 he no, said, no, yes, I'm not buying it again. I want buy. to eat Nigerian but yes, banana. That's exactly what we are saying, that you shouldn't buy. You should be, be able to trace where it is from, who planted it, what are the chemicals involved. And Nigeria, once they consider... Most of them are genetic, now, the genetic modified. You, the potentials you are saying, now, the banana industry is employing more people than the federal government, local government, staff, state government are employing. Really? Yes. Uh, do you, do you have statistics to back that? Good. It's like any other thing in this country. Statistics is difficult to me. Even our population, it has no statistics. But on your eye statistics, go around all garages, travel anywhere in this country, you will see a banana seller. 
along the parks, along the road. Chiefs, plantain chips, amala. So many, so many, they are around, they are around. And we know that in this country we can make up to 20 billion US dollar from banana mm -hmm. annually. Just like you said, 10 trillion naira. Yes, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm not saying trillion, I'm yeah. saying billion. 20 billion dollars. Yes. If, if you convert it now, it's almost, it's now almost 20 give, billion dollars. Nigeria's budget is about 23 to 25 let billion dollars a year. Let me, give That's trillion let, naira. Me, let me just give you a small example. Mm. In, a, in one hectare of land, you plant good soil. You plant 2,500 suckers. The plant lets you plant 2,500. In Abuja here, if you drive around all the valleys, you see plantain. And we have been able to go around and see that a minimum of 15 hectares. And one banana will cost minimum of 1,500. Do your mathematics. 1,500 times 2,500 times 15. That's harnessing what you have in Abuja here alone. Then if you have 15 hectares for only Abuja, are you money to take, let's take three to 500 hectares per state. How much is that? Now, the pseudo stem is used for jeans. It's used for paper. It's used for so many things. We have been able to uh, now work with uh, one uh, Asian, um, uh, Asian country, a company that is now in Delta State, that will use the pseudo stem. Yeah, because Delta Cell is huge on plantain. Yes, it's not yeah. as it's not even number one there. Oh, okay. We have a uh, Bayasa, we have uh, Ondo. Because they have those plantain, they call Bendel plantain. Yeah, yeah. They call yeah. It that. yeah. Yes, they call them. They, 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 they. But now this seed is them three feet big. Because normal plantain will be about seven feet plus. So you have two seed stems from there, and you sell one seed stem for four thousand. Add all that, mm -hmm. so your banana, the leaf is sold. The dry leaves are sold. So for a plant of maybe you sell at 7,500 naira for one plant and 2,500 for one hectare. Do that mathematics. Okay, let me bring in Dr. Maduka. You've mm -hmm. raised a lot of issues, even talking about nice health program being selective. Uh, I want to ask a question uh, concerning that. Have you approached as an association, did you approach NICEL with your complaints? Yeah, um, sometime in June, I... We wrote to the central bank governor. We petitioned the central go bank governor, you know, telling him our challenges and what we went through in the hands of NISA. And as I speak with you up to now, there has not been any response from the central bank governor. We have also uh, confronted the NISA PMRO in some of the states where we applied. And then as I speak with you, nothing has really happened. Mm. Did you go to NISA? Well, the last time I went to NISA, we went to complain. And we were told that uh, they are still working on, on our documents. Okay. That was when we, we, we have not gotten approval. That was the last time I went to the national headquarters at Metama. But uh, that day, I think I met with one of the senior officers there who told us, uh, who asked somebody to go and look for our file. And then he went there and said, the ticket of Cover Fast just came in not a few hours ago, but they're going to handle that. Okay. And later we were called that uh, our approval, approval has been given to our ticket, that the farmer should come for capturing. And we announced to our members to go for capturing, and which they did. So many of them went for the capturing. They were captured. And the, a document was asked. They were asked to sign a document in the course of the documentation, which stated in that, docu in that document that they have collected inputs, such as fertilizer, herbicides, and what have you, waiting for the money to be given to them. So to my greater surprise, after the farmers have signed a you know, collection without even collecting anything, NASAL called and said that the disbursement will not co continue again. OK. OK, I just needed us. I just wanted you to expand so that when I get back to NASAL, I would definitely lay mm. this, this complaints. But, but let's move ahead. Um, do you think that commodities that's commodities as a whole, all the agriculture, let me put it this way, mm. agricultural commodities are receiving desired attention. Well, to mm. be frank, uh, we, are, we are not there yet. 
even with all this diversification of Nigeria's economy, all the stock around agriculture, the CBN, for example, would begin even to intervene. Of course, it's talked about cotton, which is a commodity. It's talked about um, palm oil and you know rice and all of that. Is it that we've not we've not gotten to where we should be? Is the worst over for commodities? The worst is not over. It's oh. not the worst is not over. We still have a bright future ahead. But uh, to be frank, um, it is only on papers that those things exist. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the intervention on cotton, the Uncle Bros program on cotton. I was with the cotton president some time ago. We met in a program. He said they have be able to assess the Ancobras program through the central bank intervention. But uh, the challenges are ahead of us is, is, is such in a manner that uh, the banking industry, who are the major players as far as agricultural lending and lending is concerned in Nigeria, have always been a problem as far as commodity association is concerned. Because most of the problems we have is the farmers will be asked to go and open an account. You are asked to bring collateral. And these monies are not being disbursed until when there's no need for the disbursement again, maybe around November, December. Somebody who wants to cultivate maize, dry, uh, what is the maize? They're giving the, money, the person money in November. What do you think the person will do the, the, with the money? The person will end up spending that money for Christmas celebration or whatever festivity that, that's around that period. And that has been a challenge. The government must, as a matter of national importance, see agriculture as an industry, invest huge in agriculture. In one, the agriculture value of Nigeria has dropped. One, um, looking at the extension services in agriculture, which ordinarily are supposed to be the major driver of the agricultural value chain activities in Nigeria. If you go to ADP now, you cannot find more than three or five staffs of eight of ADP working as essential workers in these various uh, ADPs in Nigeria. And the people who are ADP extension officers are aged men and women who in the next five years will leave that field and nothing is being done in that direction to train, to young train young more younger people. persons to come into agricultural extension services. And that is where we, have, where we fail as a nation. Nigeria need to train more younger people in agricultural extension services. What, what do you think is the biggest risk facing commodities, that's agricultural commodities advancement uh, in the country? Because I know you've talked ab about a lot of challenges, challenges of even funds, challenges of uh, agri even research institutions yes. to get more uh, 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 seeds and uh, or more, you know, begin to invent uh, more uh, ways to make the uh, sector better, input, market, preservation, storage, and all of that. Out of all these, which is the greatest challenge that we should pose, uh, we should face? Because some people will say, oh, okay, it's money, money, money. But sometimes it's money just to the answer enough. to the problem. Yeah, so. Well, uh, for mine, because it's better, I would not know the problem of other association. <laughs> but what I know, the biggest problem is government. Government should come out with a clear policy of removing his hand from business of farming. They are not the farmers. They make policies on their tables there and bring these policies without informing, informing the commodities associations who are involved in the farming. So if you say government is, should take off hands. Yes. Because even the agriculture we have right now, in terms of funding, is government hands that are into it. Like, like I told you just now, yes. it's possible for you to remove government. We, three of us here, this is what we want to do. Government, give us the enabling environment. Don't let people intervene. You can, you can have, we still have the Minister of Agriculture trying to make sure that science goes ahead to give us development. If we, government can make policies like what they are doing, allow percent mo, me, me to borrow money from bank at a lower percentage to do what I want to do. Because it's a good agri without agriculture, this country will not move. It was, one, it was the, driving, the wheel that was driving this country before. Some because of oil, they dumped it. So that time, government was doing nothing. It was a farmer that was carrying those uh, uh, um, granite. Uh, uh, yes, and then in, in the south, the oil palm. It was a farmer, not government. So they should leave, leave give them. Gov government should remove their hands and then tell us what do you really want. 
how do we do these things? What laws do you want us to make to make or make you grow? Mm -hmm. That is what I feel. Because without what I've just told you, if, I'm, if I can assess uh, 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 suckers from Mr. A, and I know I will pay him, because you, the consumer, must pay me. And I know the date you give me suckers on the 10th, I know by on the 20th you consume, I will get my money. The, f the, the, the middleman is ready can pay you now because he's sure your money will come. So we are going to invest among ourselves. The transporter knows you will consume. He knows the date. He so like goes they do from it, the marketplace yeah, to... They, today is uh, Friday. Yes, the yesterday to the in market? Cameroon, they moved f uh, banana from Cameroon to France. They know it will arrive in France on so date. They know the day it will come to the shelf. They know they must buy them. So if government should withdraw, they'll be, I'm not saying they should totally withdraw, but they should make the policies, make us be able that's to That's how come. friendly policies yes. are to the hands. Anybody that's bringing banana, and there's something that many of us Very do Very quickly, know. we have yes. to go. Yes, Man, many people do not know. What you consume could be dangerous, and government is not doing it about it. If I know, as the president of the association, I know where your banana or your plantain is coming from, and you, the consumer, knows, and I'm monitoring what the government is not doing, no government in this country, in this world, will deny your product outside this country. Okay. Dr. Madika, very quickly as we close, what are your final remarks? I know that we can't finish or we can't no, exhaust this in one, in one show. On, on a final yeah. note, uh, we also be looking at farmer safety because uh, a lot of farmers has been killed in the course of this crisis between the farmers and herdsmen. Now, when NISAL or any other any financial institution is giving loan to farmers, they don't consider the life of the farmer. What they look at is the crop insurance. No, but should they even be concerned about security? There are agencies that should be concerned with security no, 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 and no, life. Not about mining. Not, life. About, not <laughs> about mining the the farm the farms. Now I'm talking about. Okay. In the EOPs, economic of production. Very quickly, I have to go. You yeah. have ten seconds. Okay. To end. In in economic of production, mm -hmm. you will see insurance is covered. Insurance is mentioned in the commission of production, but the, the, the safety of the farmer is not there. Okay. So I think they should also look at the farmer's safety. Okay, I think we'll continue another day, but you said something which is very critical, the security of farmers. In fact, this week on Monday, I had a farmer call me from Kaduna that she's not been able to go to the farm in the last few months. She's invested nine million naira into the farm. She cannot go to the farm. That her neighbor was in fact kidnapped and ransomed with 1.2 million naira, a female farmer who is even a widow. That was on Monday. So I think we really need to take these 